Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips here. Just finished watching Hatchet 3 on demand. Watched it on, you know, cable on demand. I think it's also in some selected theaters right now. But just want to do a little review on this one. You know, the movie picks up right where the second one let off. Daniel Harris's character, you know, thinks she killed Victor Crawley. It happens in all of them. You know, he thinks she kills him. And basically it ends up being, you know... Picks right up after she thinks she kills him again and scalps him and takes the scalp to the police officers and tell them about what happened. They end up arresting her because she's got a head, you know, scalped hair and stuff. And they're like, believe she killed somebody. So, they you know, they don't believe her story. So it's them going out into the woods to try and investigate, you know, what's going on and things like that. I will say, though, Daniel Harris in this one has the least to do compared to the other ones. I mean, most of the time it's her sitting in a jail, sitting in a car. I mean, there's some stuff near the end. But it really was not, like, don't go into this for Daniel Harris to be like she was in the other ones. It was... A, you know, she wasn't in the first one, but, you know, the second one, because she replaced the girl from the first movie. But it wasn't like the last one where she had a whole lot to do. You know, of course, Tony Todd wasn't in this one. Uh, Sid Haig has a cameo in it. Sean Whalen was in it, you know, from People Under the Stairs. Uh, Zach Galligan plays the main cop. Zach Galligan was, you know, from Gremlins and has kind of a Mark Cuban thing going on now, the guy from Shark Tank. I will say one thing, too, like a technical thing. The jail they used... It, for some reason to me, I did not like that jail. I did not feel like it photographed very well. I thought the bars were kind of weird. I know it's a weird thing. just didn't love it. It was too white in there and kind of not any tone to it or definition. just wasn't the per didn't look like a jail that would be out in the swamp like that. It looked... This, I don't know, it just didn't fit to me to that. But the whole thing is basically Carolyn Williams' character is a reporter going to talk to Daniel Harris's character. And it's mainly those two have the scenes together. And then it's all the cops, you know, Derek Mears is one of the cops, all out there investigating it. Just like the other ones, they're out there getting killed off. And it does have some really good gore scenes. Like, the, I feel like all these movies have really good, you know, gore scenes and the death scenes, all that kind of stuff. Really well done. Sean Whalen, Whalen's death was pretty cool. There's a lot of really over-the-top cool ones. Like, that was some of the best stuff in the movies. The weakest stuff, though, was the lack of Daniel Harris having a lot to do. And, you know, it's another one of those ones, you put, there probably end up being more of them, I'm sure. Uh, I, I definitely would watch them, too, to see what you know if they do end up doing another one. I liked it, though, but I did not think it was out of the other two. I didn't think it was as good. I thought I liked the first two the best. Uh, the first, though, was my all-time favorite of all of them. I thought that was a really strong slasher film that really holds up. It's like one of the top... You know, in the last couple of years, last, you know, 20 years, really good one. Um, but I would definitely recommend checking this out. Like I said, though, don't go into it thinking Daniel Harris is in too much of it. Uh, and don't think, too, that it's going to, like, be a whole lot of new. It's a lot of the same kind of stuff. But cool, like, cameos and a lot of cool horror actors to see in the movie again, like Carolyn Williams and things like that, who was in, you know, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. But anyway, though, guys, thanks a lot for watching and for subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.